she is member of the FIDA Education Commission. She is a real fighter. She's been fighting in Africa for educational chess for a while, and she does everything with a passion. She has extensive experience in preschool chess as well, and she's going to talk about how to do it. Think like a child, teach like an adult. So give a very warm welcome to Nicola. This is a thing like the child pot. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing like a child pot. I'll sound like a child again. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> we just played this just before it started. Okay. No, it must work. <laughs> well, the video is not playing, so it's powered by its fault. I'm afraid the computer's. I'm afraid, I'm afraid the computer's hanging. That's what the problem is. <laughs> it's one out round. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so let's put things on this one. You have the presentations on the. Oh no way. Press play one. No, the computer completely locked up. It's refusing to work with us. Yeah. Um, do you have the hard disk? Uh, the next speaker's computer is up here. Can we use it for this presentation? Why not? <laughs> It works even better. <laughs> Give me the yeah. So meanwhile, we'll try to kill the other computer. <laughs> it's not very okay. It's not very uh, this is this device. This is it's not.
Yes. <laughs> so this is an unconventional way to start a presentation when you have to first apologize. <laughs> so my sincere apologies, because this song will be stuck in your mind for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, I'm Anza Lopsha, like Rita said, I'm from South Africa, and I will be talking about creating a positive learning environment for preschoolers. This not again. <laughs> so think like a child, teach like an adult. You had a little bit of a child moment now, right? Who did not enjoy it? Yeah, before you change your mind, everyone did, right? Now I want to ask you to go back in memory. I want you to think back of your first ever learning experience that you had whether this was as uh, an athlete or a chess player with a coach or in a classroom with a teacher. I want you to think back. Don't think too long. Yeah, are we there? By show of hands, those on Zoom, you're also welcome to put a thumbs up or thumbs down. Those at, at, at home watching, you can do that on the chat. I think there's a chat or something, right? By show of hands, how many of you had a positive experience and how many had a negative experience. So you can give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Just for interest's sake, who had a positive first learning experience? There's no right or wrong answer, so you, you can try. <laughs> yeah, it's normally 50-50 or 60-40 in either way. Because, not because, not yet, because. I want you to think, what did that educator do that made you decide today to do this or this? Again, those that's on Zoom, you're welcome to type it in the chat. I will read it later on. Those watching online, please also share with us what did that teacher or that educator do? Because this is for, for all of us, very interesting to see what teachers do to create this or that. Last question. I won't ask your shoe size and all that stuff as well. So last question. How long ago was this? More or less. I'm sure you, you know whether it was in grade two or three. <coughs> Those more than 20 years ago. Put up your hand. Okay, keep it up. If it's more than 30 years ago, keep it up. Okay, I know some of the ladies will now go like, I'm not even 30 years. <laughs> okay. Depends on who's asking, right? More than 40 years ago. What? More than 50? <laughs> Why does it go like this? Now? More than 50. Now, someone did something more than 50 years ago for four people to remember that today. Some of us can't even remember what we had for breakfast, but they can remember more than 50 years ago because of one educator who did something. Now, I also want to emphasize something. Now I'm the bearer of bad news. As educators, we have responsibility because what we do today might create this or that in 50 years time, every single day with every single child. So my plea to you today, firstly, if you do not have the skills or the passion to work with children under the age of six, don't. There are people who do have it and who can do it. Let them do it. Always get the wrong one. 
want you to read through that on your own first and then I'll I'll read you through it as well. We understand this that one of the primary differences between children and adults is the lack of life experience found in children. It is one of the reasons why children rely on their imagination to compensate for the lack of experience, especially when it comes to dealing with difficult and novel concepts. It is of paramount importance for the chess educator to enter this world of imagination and build on the current framework in order for a child to understand various concepts. Now, some of us, those who are over 30 or not, it's your choice today, you know, um, we have a lifespan of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years that we have, that we build experience, that whatever we learn, whenever we learn something new, we want our brains automatically want to connect it to something that's familiar. Now, if your database is now not just the database, but an entire mind, then um, you have more things to connect it to. But a child at the age of three or four or five or six have only that. So how do we get to them? We need to get into their imaginations. We need to tell them stories. Children want to hear stories. They want to play and they want to have fun. Even adults. You don't have to agree, but I know you do. Um, in order to, to teach Jamie chess, the educator needs to know three basic things knows how to teach or coach, knows chess, and then the last one, he needs to know Jamie. Now, I was appointed as the bad cop for the conference. Just play along. Um, so I'm asking the tough questions today. Don't, please don't put up your hand. I don't really want to know. I just want you to think. But those educators out there, especially those watching online as well, how many of you know all the kids in your class, if you teach in a classroom or coach, doesn't matter. How many of you know all the kids' names? How many of you know all of their surnames? Okay. How many of you know whether that child has siblings? And how many and how old? How many of you know who's raising that child? Whether that child is being raised by both parents, one parent, a grandma, grandpa, aunt, auntie. How many of you know whether those parents or caretakers have jobs? How many of you know whether that child had breakfast this morning? It's getting tough now, right? All of these questions I asked can influence the positive learning environment inside the classroom. These are external factors, but they affect the internal learning environment. Those of you who have kids, have you ever tried teaching or doing anything with a child who's tired or hungry? Now imagine being a teacher and have to teach that child. So how do we create a positive learning environment? I have solutions too, you know. First of all, it needs to be fun. When we talk about fun, we need to understand that there are two types of noise and two types of silence. When we talk about noise, there's a busy and a dead noise. Busy <clears throat> and a dead noise. Busy noise is when they're actually talking about a task that you gave them or discussing the games or discussing the positions and learning from each other. Don't underestimate peer learning and teaching. Sometimes, or in general, the best way to learn is to teach. So whenever a child repeats something to teach someone, another child, they're learning. And you don't have to, you cannot be the only teacher. It's not all about you, right? So let the children teach. Just obviously facilitate and monitor it to make sure that they're teaching the right stuff. But other than that, allow them 
I know chess is a silent game and or a quiet game and we we want to have a quiet classroom and a quiet environment but we don't always have to if they talk about the subject why not and then we have the dead noise where they don't talk about it and they getting up to no good sometimes you know oh, no no sorry we, we have to say unwanted behavior yes and that is your your busy noise then you have a busy silence like i hope this is a busy silence you know like seems like the children are easier to learn oh sorry to read because when you look at them you can actually see in their eyes when they like something or when they're struggling or when they understand something or when they're listening and then you have your dead silence you know the one with the wheel is turning but the hamster died last weekend already so that type of silence and then you know you need to change your activities so it needs to be fun then the next point is to have an inclusive, equitable, and to make it inclusive, equitable, and, and ethical. Sometimes we need to treat people differently in order to treat them equally. That child who's tired and he wants to lie on his, on his hands on the desk, don't tell him to sit up straight and focus and concentrate. Take him aside. Try to figure out what's happening at home. Maybe there's a new baby. A newborn in the house and baby's crying the whole night and it's a small apartment and 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 jamie can't sleep what do we do then you force jamie to sit at the desk and and learn in my eyes that's actually child abuse or a form of child abuse <laughs> no i have a blanket and a pillow let jamie sleep for 30 minutes then you try to teach jamie again if or if 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 jamie is fidgety and he's not in a good mood ask him maybe he's hungry if he's hungry, feed him. Then he can learn. It must be child-centered. So I, I have these examples that I always use with the kids in the class. The fashionable queen, you know, your product queen. And the queen, always to explain which, uh, this is just one example, but for them to understand where the king and the queen is uh, in the startup position. So I have a whole fairy tale that I tell them about where the pieces go and all that but the king and queen i would always say when mommy goes to a, a nice function and she wears a white dress she might wear white shoes or red dress red shoes you know so in this case the queen's shoes which is the square must fit a dress so often when they pack the chessboard so this is the story i tell them and then they know so they will pack the chessboard it will be months later they're already playing but sometimes they just do it too fast and I forget and then I'll just walk around and I'll say one sentence the fashion police is in the house Woo! looking at the queens they know immediately someone asked the queen on the wrong square someone's shoes is not matching their dress so these are keywords that we use often and pieces in their pajamas pieces sitting on the back rack haven't moved yet they're in their pajamas so if they play and they are in the middle game already and I would walk through the classroom and I would just say who I see I'm going to bring a bucket with ice water then they know pieces in their pajamas and they start moving those nights out and those fish out. right so you need to 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 connect to children on their level Positive learning environment is concerned with children first, athlete, athlete second. Jamie won't be a chess player or a mathematician for the rest of his life. That's probably not. But Jamie's guaranteed to be a human being for the rest of his life. So what you do today might impact on little Jamie as a human being, which can affect more than just little Jamie. And we'll get to that just now. We have to provide appropriate competition as well. So we can introduce competition. There's nothing wrong with that in the classroom in chess and education. Um, I use the example of pawn soccer. I don't know if you if you guys are familiar with that, but we only put the pawns on the board, and then the first one to get a pawn on the other side. All the rules for for the pawns um, count. As soon as they get a pawn on the other side, they score a goal. And immediately kids can connect to that because most of them will learn, most probably learn soccer before they learn chess. So that's an, one example. 
And then the, the breaking of the world record to set up the chessboard. As soon as I taught them how to set up the chessboard, I will tell them that there's a world record for this. So now obviously, <coughs> you know, children, they want to start setting up that chessboard. And we have a class record and a school record and a whatever record you want to set. Um, and that's competition, you know. And through that, you can also teach them the values of competition and certain things like being a good loser or a, a, a good winner as well. Then the last one, it involves family and community. So I would often use the example of check, for instance, the whole principle of check. How do you block a check? We use the ABCs, avoid, block, and capture. So I link that up to bullying, for instance. So I will use the example to say, if your friend's being bullied, how do you deal with that? What are your options to, to do here? So you can either avoid the bully with your friend, or you can block the bully off and say, don't mess with my friend. Or I won't, I won't use the word capture because that might just <laughs> earn me some bail money. But um, I'll rather say something like you report the bully so someone else can work with the bully and stop the bullying to take it to, to remove the bullying, not the bully, the bullying from the situation. And then I stole a quote from Jerry Nash. Um, when you reach a child, you reach a family. When you reach a family, you reach a community. When you reach a community, you reach a nation. <clears throat> the thumbs up or thumbs down that you create today as an educator reaches the child, the family, community, and the nation. So if you're not ready to take up the responsibility, don't. Just to reinstate okay. Just to test for learning, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, Andrew. That was really, really good. And our next speaker is Alessandro Dominici from Italy. He's a very old friend of mine. Um, I know him for about well, more, than ten, years, more than 10 years. Yeah. If you can call someone the father of free school chess, then Alessandro is the father of free school chess. He's been working on several Erasmus projects and national projects uh, on the topic. He's done Victor's Chess House. Got the castle project, psychometricity on a giant chessboard. I like him so much that I was willingly jumping around on giant chessboard in Malmö when he said so. And I have even forgiven him for driving off in a cab in our last conference, which we attended together and leaving me behind. So he's a very, so very welcome to Alexander. He'll be talking about yes. Strange to have a presentation on Zoom here now, after two years that we work on Zoom, and now we are going again on Zoom. But I have to stop the, sorry, I have to stop the PowerPoint, the previous one, and to open mine. I have it. Okay. Are you also when you sharing your screen? I have to, to share now, right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It works. <laughs> That's my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I want to, to uh, include the, the the castle system that uh, we invented or already we, we, we put in an Erasmus in, a, in a 1417 
starting from this work that is a psychometricity on Jadis's board that now we call earlier skills and what else and that started in Italy in 2002. So is a uh, 21 years that we working are working on that. Uh, I am uh, okay. Sierra Bianco, this uh, CGS project has been granted with the 420,000 euro by the European Union for a three years project. The leader is uh, Xen, is the biggest uh, sports body we have in Italy. And also Fiore Bianco is in, ACU is in, uh, Villalba Madrid, and 74, I mean, 64 Villalba Madrid. And we have also uh, Uppsala municipality and schools in Italy, Sweden. Uh, the main idea uh, of this project is, the, uh, of course, to use the chess as an educational tool, but uh, um, we want to, through this project, to see if it's possible to transfer to the, the skills to the teachers. In, and finally, what we want to arrive to have is the teachers are able to train their colleagues because this is the, the core idea of the project. You can imagine if you really are crazy like me, that I really want to uh, expand, to, to move to Europe in all the, in all the schools, or like in Italy, in all the schools with the chess or with this kind of tools. Uh, if you think how it could be possible this, uh, not with the external experts, because it will be too expensive. Is impossible. If you don't go through the teachers, you will not arrive to reach the goal. And what I think and what I feel, because it's 20 years that I do this as a job, this is my, my job, is that teachers, if you are inviting them in a real adapted way for them, so for school, for education, I agree uh, totally on, uh, with this kind of approach because we don't need uh, to be, they. Teachers, they, they have not to be strong in chess. So if they feel that you are inviting them into this uh, kind of methods where they can be protagonists and they don't need so many experiences before they start with you, with the training, you can really uh, involve them and you can really make them feeling they are able to transmit the, the competences to the colleagues. If this happens, is a bomb because this method will go by itself in, into the, the school, into the region, into the nation. So we are starting from nations for arriving to child, no? It's the opposite <laughs> induction. So uh, many methods. Okay, this one is, um, uh, of course, the giant chess play. Oh. What? Well, it's gone. Uh, I think we are outside uh, the Zoom now. What is happening? Okay. We are connected. Well, and uh, and uh, during these three years, we had the possibility to show this method to, to, to teachers in uh, three occasions, one in Italy, one in Spain. The last time was in Madrid. We had 80 teachers involved in this training, two days training. And finally, what we, uh, now I will show you, which is uh, one of the four models. Uh, we have four models, model A and B are for psychometricity. The model A is new because we started to work with three years old pupils. But of course, after one year, if we are not ready for, for that, okay, will be, but you need years to, to do uh, in, in the best way uh, this kind of, of system that means every lesson you know what to do, which are the videos that are helping you in this, which are the texts in, in many languages, and this is what we are preparing with this project. Uh, we have the the four models so two for psychometricity the second of course is castle that is for from four to seven age uh, uh, pupils and the other two models are model c and d that are basically for chess for teacher 
So um, we need teachers that they don't know the rules of chess from scratch. If they start with that, they will follow out. If they come knowing chess, maybe they are strong players, it's a problem. It's not a, a, a kind of luck you have because normally I prefer to start from scratch teaching chess in that way that is useful for teachers. Um, this is my, my experience. So uh, and, uh, in, in chess, normal chess, and then the Model D uh, is a, a good a new uh, protocol and that is uh, combining chess with coding and is a little bit dif more difficult than the normal chess, the, the model C. But you will see that all these methods, all these models, uh, you uh, will be able to see by yourself because this is an open source. So the CGS platform is open. And you will see now I will show you. I hope. <coughs> doesn't work it's terrible today huh? <laughs> karma you know karma what does it what is karma we have been mistreating computers for waiting um it's a big problem you have to do something wrong first no now yes yeah. why is it was much oh. <laughs> 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 okay. okay these are the four models uh <clears throat> And the model B is what I, 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 I'm going to show you. Of course, is uh, okay. We need they are uh, um, the central uh, figures of uh, of the, the, the games. Uh, we need to use the giants' board because uh, when they go physically on it, they remember them and they understand. When they are four years old, maybe they cannot write, they cannot read. But they can understand and they can feel the directions, the right, left, diagonal, from uh, backward, and all the, the, the giant chessboard, what is. And when you feel it uh, with your body, you will understand much better than when you start to play chess, which is required to you. Also, it can be stupid, but think that for a four years old child, a chessboard, a giant chessboard, is not divided into squares. If they go in on, they, they see it like uh, empty space. You uh, now go and you know this is a, um, a square, a white square. This is a black square. You divide the chessboard like that. You, I mean, who is here now. And it's impossible for you to forget this. For them, is the opposite. They feel one space. They don't. They do not divide the the, the squares. But when you have to calculate, when you you will be a, a chess player, you will need to know the chessboard, and you will need the squares. And c six, if you know that is uh, white, is better for you because you will remember better uh, what is happening, what is going. Uh, this is uh, something that if you can experience when you are a child uh, is really helpful for you. And I will show you a video about that. So we have many kinds of, of games. Uh, no. These are the topics. And of course, we need uh, uh, very uh, nice um, fairy tales, uh, music sometimes, uh, rhymes. Uh, we have, we need to make uh, uh, children use their imagination because when they use imagination, they can create a world where they know what to do. They re recognize the rules thanks to the imagination because when we have to insert some rule, we use a story. We don't say this game is you do this, do this and do that. that. No. This is the story. The king was coming into the, the castle and he saw that the room were white and black. And what is that? Blah, blah, blah. And this is the story. And thanks to that, they learn. Just uh, remember this because the story will be in, in, in internal of them. It's not something outside the story. Okay. 
Uh, this is the program. You go in the site. You can write this email. But if you go in that site, now I'm going to show you, you find a possibility to ask for free lessons. You have an access. You can go to see the five lessons, the first five lessons. For the Model C, you can see the entire program because it is an open source. So it's for you. Uh, of, of course, you have to, to try and to see. This is what I ask. I ask to you, please use this site and you will see what we are doing. Now, I, I, I try. I try. Eh? I said try so we can well, to show something. Okay. Ah, and then we need to change the share of the share. Yes, I need to share again. Okay, this is the model B. Uh, for example, this is the lesson number eight. You can see, you find the name of the lesson, summary, the equipment. For example, this game is uh, the carriages cross the castle in every direction. You have all the indication you need to know for children. All you need to know for you, you are a teacher. These are some notes. And of course, you have a video that is showing you how was uh, act this uh, game in, in this classroom that was in Castle. Uh, they are seven years old because it was better for us to record uh, that class that was, uh, was a very smart class. But of course, these games you can see can be done from four on. Also, when you are 50 or 60 years old, you can enjoy them because when we train teachers, maybe we had 100 teachers in Palermo once time with four giant chess board and it was incredible because everyone was uh, enjoying it. They, they really started laughing. They became children because if you don't do with this kind of a approach, you don't understand this activity. Absolutely, it's impossible. So this is the video. There is no music. Music? Sound. Don't change that. Yeah, it's got sound in there. We have sound here. Right. And there's sound here. So. Okay, you can imagine music. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, okay, this game. If you, but okay, you can read. I think. Oh, okay. We have the subtitles. Uh, these are groups uh, with the tambourine. With the one beat, uh, you go vertical and you cross the the castle because this became a castle. It's not a giant chess board. With two beats, you go horizontal with your group, and with three beats, you go vertical. Uh, and can be easy to, to see that, but uh, of course they are all involved in this. It's impossible that they get out from this activity because it's very, very simple. Uh, but we have a 96 games like that. Another one is with music tour. We use a lot of music. Okay. This one is a. Uh, now you understand what I mean when I, I see. Uh, I want to foresee which will be my movements. I want to understand where I will go at the end. It's like when I am playing chess, I want to see a, a, a variant of three half moves. Is, it, is enough for me, maybe? And now uh, in this game, they. Um, must um, foresee where is the how to get to the 
the square. And where is and how many steps you need to reach the square and which is your choice in, in terms of which line you want to use with two lines maybe. I show you. Just try to, to read the subtitles to understand. So this was the sharing screen. Yeah. So mm, this was fine. Okay. Right. This is new because I have not this option in mind. Ce l'abbiamo proprio lì, proprio lì dove c'è il politicale. Bravissima, proprio lì, perfetto. Come fai ad andare al tuo rosso? E mi Okay. Quanti passi Imagine bisogna sound, fare? But no, no. So L'arancione è il posto in cui okay. devo arrivare. Mentre questo okay. è il posto okay. dove parto. So, Cristina. Proprio lì, proprio lì dove c'è il giallo. Bravissimo, And, uh, proprio lì, perfetto. Come fai? Ad andare al cono rosso. E mi dici, quando l'hai fatto, come ti sei spostato? Si conta quello su cui sono dove parlo? No. Allora, contiamoli insieme. Proviamo. Uno, due, tre, quattro. Come l'hai fatto questi passi? In orizzontale, verticale. Of course, the other child, children, they are participating because they are a student. She uh, is a little girl who is doing and, and, and that will be the place. And also Benedetta will get points because she will be smarter and uh, maybe if you find uh, the fastest, uh, fastest, uh, um, fastest route it is better. Uh, well, without music is terrible. Okay, so this is uh, what I, I, I want to share with you. Uh, please come. Lei ha annunciato già prima di farlo, ma come hai fatto? You can see. Come and watch it, please. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. Thank you so much, Alessandro. Thank you very much, Alexander Chabert. Our next guest is uh, Crystal Minnev from Belgium. She's a preschool teacher with many years of uh, teaching experience. Recently, she has written a picture book for preschoolers called uh, One Day I'll Be Queen. Uh, during the break, I had a chance to click through this book upstairs in the cafe. And I have to tell you, these are the most beautiful illustrations of chess pieces I've ever seen. So I encourage you to look at the book as well. I'm sure they will feature in the presentation too. And I'm really looking forward to see what these chess pieces are up to now. So welcome, Crystal from Belgium. If you want to just start, um, I will yeah. have your slides um, running in a moment. So my name is Crystal. I'm Belgium, like uh, Rita said. This is the book, big enough to show children in a class. It's uh, show the camera really good. Okay. Yeah. Very good quality also. <laughs> uh, but before I tell you more about the book and um, about the way I, uh, I work with it, I want to show you a movie, three minutes, um, because you can see then how I work with the children. It's a bit similar, like... Uh, um, I don't know where he is now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the presentation, but I have also a movie. Okay. Um, you see? want to start with the movie? Yeah, start with the movie. Is it it's clicker for the this presentation at the moment? Let's start with this. Um, yeah. Open with, we'll see.
It's four, four years ago. <laughs> So thank you for your attention. Um, I now have eight minutes left to tell you more about my adventure, my new adventure, like standing here before an audience speaking in English, first time speaking in English for a presentation, so it's a bit uh, <laughs> scary, but okay. Uh, I tell you the story about the book and my uh, work with chess. Um, 13 years ago, I wasn't working with uh, preschoolers, but with uh, six, seven years old children. And one day, um, I was very impressed with two children who were playing chess uh, at the age of six. And um, they were so young, I, I was thinking. Uh, the other children in my class were very interested in, uh, in the game and asked me a lot of questions. And, um, and it, they were really fascinated by the game. So we decided to, to make this a project. So we immediately start writing to a chess club and to the Flemish uh, Chess Federation. And we were visited by the late Mark Levers, uh, chairman of the Federation, who brought us 10 chess boards. And he came in and um, he said to the children, here, you can have them. You can keep them. So they were cheering and uh, with happiness. But... Um, he completes his sentence and he said there are two conditions. First, you have to share them with the whole school. And uh, second, I expect you on the next uh, competition, the Belgian chess school competition. So um, here we are in three months, I think. I used the step-by-step -step method, working in front in the class and then uh, uh, playing. So we, we went to the competition, um, but uh, we didn't win a cup, but we came home with a cup of the youngest participants. But uh, what happened next was uh, very special to me because the, the five years old, the uh, children, they, they were coming to me and they say, next year I will learn to read and to write and to play chess with you. So the... the uh, the, the, you can say that uh, Mark Lieber's visit from the Chess Federation um, 
and getting us the equipment to 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 work with that made the um, that chess become a part of the DNA in our school. It was a very important moment. Um, so since then, chess never left school. <laughs> and here, three years later, we received a chess school certificate because we, uh, we offer chess within the curriculum. Uh, so all the children can get the opportunity to learn the game. Um, but in 2015, I was given another assignment at school. Uh, and since my colleague who took over the class did not master chess, I was asked to teach chess to the five years old. The way, in that way, they could uh, know all the rules before they started in the primary school. But one year wasn't long enough to, uh, to cover everything. So it was suggested to start with the four years old. And I was thinking, oh my God, they are so young. How, how should I approach this? Uh, but I'm working uh, now 38 years in uh, elementary school and uh, 25 years with uh, preschoolers. So I was using then my, uh, my, my experience and um, I started to to play with the chess pieces like dolls. And um, then they had a, a conversation with each other. And I improvised uh, a lot of stories, like I heard here before, use stories. Eh? And, um, and I also had to adapt all the games that I knew from the step-by-step -step book uh, and so on. Um, because I had to work with a group, with a group very young children. So that's different. Um, because many young children don't understand that they cannot uh, capture the king. I wanted to teach them from in the beginning that you have to protect your king. So because chess is all about the king. And then you have a story about the king. There's, here is a very nice story about the two, the two kings, you know, the white and the black meeting each other. Um, so the very first steps the children are doing on a chessboard uh, is, is uh, playing a king. And it's very simple. They have just to take one step in, in all directions. And uh, then I said, the king has to rest for a while. He's a bit, he's an old man, he's a bit tired. So, okay, the king is very important. Um, in 2018, I was working with a colleague on another book about writing letters, also working with the body, uh, um, experience everything uh, using rhymes. And uh, I met Dirk de Wette, an illustrator from Belgium. And when you meet the right people, it immediately, immediately affects uh, your energy and your creativity. So by meeting Dirk, there was a mean, an image in my head starting, developed uh, a picture book for young children about chess. Three years later, um, I had my script proofread by parents and friends and colleagues and people who know nothing about chess. Uh, it was a bit stressy waiting, uh, but uh, after the positive feedback, um, I asked Tom Picou, an international master from my home time, to review my work. And thanks to Tom, uh, I get in touch with uh, Daniel van Herzele, <laughs> uh, the managing director of Thinkers Publishing, who I can call now my editor and partner in crime. Because we have a mission together, uh, but who is it meant for? And why and how do we want to approach this? The questions uh, that I concerned me most while writing the book was who will take over at school after me when I retire? Why do I feel little ambition among my colleagues to retrain? I think I have found five reasons, but I'm sure there are a lot more. <laughs> but um, I think it's because they can't play chess themselves, or they, uh, they are afraid that it is a very challenging game that they will not understand. Chess is uh, uh, 
difficult game everyone says or because they already have so many tasks there is no time or desire to study something new like chess and also a school day is already filled with other learning content and I know uh, the last one is also very important because they do not know the benefits of chess enough, I think. And um, I may not have to explain the benefits of chess to you. What is clear is that chess trains executive functions uh, in children that will later as adults make them to meet the 21st century skills that an employer expects of his staff or they will need when they go into business for themselves. Oh, but how can we help teachers who want to introduce chess in school but are unsure how to do it themselves? The solution that I had in mind was let them explore and learn chess with the children simply by reading a good book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allowed so uh, if they just tell the story and read all the chess rules they know it themselves so everything is in here so um, when they see the, the, when, the, when they see that the children get excited and enthusiastic maybe then you can convince them to work with the manual, it's also here, yeah, to work with the group and to work for the parents or grandparents. Um, give them through experience and step-by-step -step plan, give them materials, give them a book, give them games um, and show them examples so they can see that it is possible, like movie, like uh, photos. Um, you can see some exercises on a small board, a big board. Um, you can you can show there's a variety possible to work in the with chess and the lessons. Um, I use a lot of variation. I work with, with very young ones, with all the ones, mix the groups. So chess is possible. And um, um, here you see, you see children of two and a half who are also very interesting in the game. With uh, the book, there comes a toolbox full of tips and games. Um, Teacher, parents, just coaches can build up step by step. The message is have fun, enjoy the book and the games together and take your time. I use two years to, um, to put everything on. I work with very small groups from six to eight children and maximum 30 minutes uh, per group. With the four years old, I start a whole year with these four pieces. So I start with the king, um, then the rook, uh, the bishop, and the queen. Um, the last game of the king, before I start with the rook, I put a car on a chessboard because every toddler knows that uh, not to stand in the street when there's a car approaches. So they have to move their king to safety each time. Actually, they are already lifting check without realizing uh, at the time. I think the hardest thing for experienced and trained ch uh, chess players is to apply the game in such a way that you think at a toddler as a toddler level uh, Merrick, make it very simple. Don't overwhelm them with too much rules and uh, at once. Tackle it playfully using the language of their environments. How is, the book, is this book different from any other chess, chess book for young children? 
Well, it starts like a fairy tale with a knight, king, a girl with a dream and a dragon. I choose a girl as the main character because by doing so, I want to encourage, encourage girls and make it clear that this game is also for them. <clears throat> the history of the, of the game of chess is incorporated as you are uh, acquainted with the characters. Um, the picture book is very inviting with the funny and beautiful drawings. There is a lot to discover like the dragon and the red pillow when it's checkmate he has to lay down on the red pillow um for uh, the youngest preschoolers it is best to tell it in your own words but the book is uh, in rhyme story um it is a choice uh, using rhyme because preschoolers love repetition. They ask you, tell it me again and again and again. So rhyme is very good to, for memorizing all the chess rules. Uh, what's also different is every chess rule is a picture. Every chess rule is uh, being drawn. Let's have a look. Um, Add some images from the book. Checkmates. The kings. You see the rule? Huh? Square. One square between them. The rooks. Straight line, not a broken line. The children of four years in my class, they are telling, no, this is a broken line. Mostly that that's uh, for the children of six years to say. <laughs> but the very young ones know, knows now uh, the bishops and the queen. Um, when introducing the queen in the book, you can hear how the white king is surprised at the black king's proposal to allow the queen to the play. But uh, girls can play chess just as well as men. <laughs> There are a lot of rules. Uh, so I'm uh, starting in the second year with the five years old. I start with the pawn and then the, the knight. Um, the book is aimed at children from the age of four. Because of this, I only focus on the basic rules. Some possibilities uh, or positions are not covered here, like castling and en passant. Uh, and once kids uh, show sufficient interest in the game, you can consult other books. Voila, thank you for your attention. And thank you for the Thank you, Christa. Thank you. Would you have your book available upstairs? Christa. Christa. Okay. Would you have your book available upstairs to look yeah. at? Uh, yeah. Why didn't you bring some books to sell? Yeah. Uh, they are not in English now. So yeah. when will they be ready? November? September. <laughs> so from September, we will have English copies available. Good luck. And last but not least, uh, um, Carol from, from the Netherlands. Carol is a chess author, a chess journalist, a chess teacher. He's authored many chess books and he's also the science project manager for Chessable. And I'm sure you have a lot of interesting things to tell us about. Chris. Yeah, but short, five minutes, six minutes. That's all right. You are very thirsty and the bar is waiting upstairs. So <laughs> five minutes with us. Yeah, that will be about it. Uh, it's called Chess. Some insights and best practices. This is a short version. Uh, on my English site, you will find a longer version. Um, I start with the timeline. My grandson. Uh, it goes faster now because my son is an international master, but then you take a long time, but you learn and learn, and it goes faster. Methods of learning. 
There are some videos, but you can uh, look for them yourself. Okay, this was our first training. This reminds me of this uh, chest fever movie, uh, 1925 from uh, Moscow. The guy walking around the chest, discovering the chessboard, colors. Well, storytelling is very important uh, to involve them uh, in the game. And then that was about four years old, I think. Now he's 11. And plays a decent game, but uh, already you could play at, at six. Playing against my friend Arthur Yusupov. We were for many years together. And they both uh, dropped a piece so it can draw. <laughs> Okay, that's me. I'm a chess teacher. I'm a journalist. For many years, I worked at uh, regional uh, newspapers. But now I, have my, I run my own chess academy. And besides it, um, I studied psychology also. And um, I have two uh, activities. My chess academy, it's with autistic kids on schools, writing books, several things. And I'm a science project manager. Uh, a chess ball. We have uh, with uh, that lady there. <laughs> we are the science team. Okay. Uh, this book was published uh, first by myself in Dutch. Then the new chess came to me can be published in uh, in English. So it was. Uh, and the book is about. Uh, there is a chapter in it about uh, preschool uh, chess. Maybe 20 pages, I don't know exactly, but then you will find much more information. And the book is uh, basically about uh, didactics, uh, science, applications, but also uh, research. There's a lot of special needs group from artists, um, uh, highly gifted uh, groups, uh, dyslexia, uh, blind, uh, and about more than 300. Uh, then there are so many aspects in didactics and uh, research, etc. That um, I made, I think I made uh, make an uh, alphabet of it. So 328, and it's about uh, game based learning, it's about how to give feedback. Well, name it. You will find it on that side. By the way, there you find also uh, I attended before uh, one chess conference, made a lot of footage. And you will find it uh, also uh, on that side. That's a book by my son, and that's a book we uh, wrote uh, together. Okay, there you will find more information. Also, reviews uh, about the book and uh, 19 pages of sources can be interesting. So, all the, uh, all the things I describe in this book, all the sources I found, you may find them back on the site. Well, uh, just a metaphor for life, telling nothing new. But also for young kids. But all every time, it's the frame of reference. Um, okay, but um, also for young uh, children. Um, well, there are four uh, aspects, I think. Because for me, chess is not only uh, becoming a national uh, champion or something. It's uh, mainly about uh, personal development. Uh, and especially um, special needs groups uh, can profit from that. Well, four categories, I think. Social, how to cooperate, co communicate. You can stimulate via chess. Emotional, dealing with challenges. Cognitive, of course, metacognitive. Um, that what aspects. Well, when you give... Uh, Education is always about the right combinations. What's the characteristics of the student? The mediator. And I think uh, in a few days, um, with the Dansk Skolenskap, uh, we, we worked also a lot of together. And I think, uh, I don't know where's Mikkel. Yeah, you will come back on that uh, topic probably. Eh? Yeah, uh, Feuerstein, etc. There. Michael will tell the rest. Uh, so she practical circumstances. Okay, this uh, list of things. And make it concrete. 
and in a good, uh, good combination. Scientific research is scarce. And the quality of, uh, according to Gobet, uh, Fernand Gobet and uh, Campitelli, the, uh, this is just one article they wrote. Uh, Giovanni Sala wrote other things. Uh, they were also people who spoke before at these conferences. Okay, so we are left with cars research and um, questions about quality of about uh, a lot of research. What to do? We'll make the best of it. Um, but we can learn from, as we saw uh, today, there were a lot of best practices. And we can learn from them. And, um, and also, well, you can look around, you go to another school where they teach or whatever. Uh, you can observe, you can, you can have your own experiences, you can look in the literature. And maybe not in the chess, but also uh, but in other domains, you can find a lot of information. Uh, in psychology, didactics. Well, sometimes there was research in my book, I describe uh, some things about game-based learning. Uh, well, uh, there were psychologists who did research um, in the game industry, and they get insights which we can use in the chess world. So you not not always you need to discover it yourself in the chess world. Also, you can look in other domains. <clears throat> How to start? Well, some start three or four years old. Best way, I think, mini games. Important fun and uh, success experiences. Uh, I have three pillars in my approach. I think it's um, yeah, variation, fascination, participation. I mean, uh, variation, a lot of different methods and techniques. Fascination, uh, stimulate the intrinsic motivation. And participation, let them always be very active, involve themselves. I did not uh, think about this all myself, but just, um, uh, um, for example, uh, Maria Montessori already said, uh, help me to uh, do it myself. Uh, well, how to stimulate interest? And when to start? You start when the child has uh, shows interest. But you can stimulate that interest by getting your children acquainted with chess in a nice way. Uh, for example, I, I show some pictures, uh, uh, some examples later, or at the end. Well, the uh, children see a chess board, they see people play, they see a video, uh, role models. Scaffolding, that's, uh, that comes from uh, Montessori to help them. Support where necessary, but give them uh, you have the right to be wrong is, is very important. Let them experiment. These are only five points. I think we can learn very much from uh, an author, also, um, for example, uh, Fred Weitzkin. Uh, Searching for Bobby Fischer is very interesting. There are much more books. But uh, I think there are several books by, by Polgar. And um, years ago, I, I, I finished study at the University of Amsterdam. One of my projects was uh, psychology, and one of the projects was um, uh, social de determinants of uh, talent development. And uh, I took some biographies. One of them was... Uh, by Polgar, and I just thought, uh, what did he do? It's kind of social technology. Well, he created a stimulating um, environment, uh, goal setting, uh, feedback, playful way of learning, self-confident. Also, for example, he used all kinds of social psychology, uh, things that are known from social psychology. If you uh, give people the opportunity to stop themselves, they, they can 
do much more than if you said in advance uh, a goal. But also Polka did with it. Okay, there are a lot of things. I think in um, in the long version you see, you see about 17 the Polka uh, aspects. Okay, <coughs> I end with some. Um, I made this. Um, this of course a lot of people do this, but I uh, I called it um, the chess karate kid. You know this movie, basic uh, the skills the boy uh, learns. Now that the anti integrates and he's good karate guy. Well, then you can do this also with mini games and, and chess. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, black or white. I always say to the kids, the first colors, first you, uh, uh, first you play white and you play black. This is a famous Dutch movie, Long Live the Queen. And the thousands of Dutch kids have seen it. Very inspiring. Game is learning. There are, of course, uh, we have uh, Chess Kid. Very good. I can recommend. I myself uh, worked for years with this one. Um, but uh, a lot of principles are the same. Uh, game based learning. And this is a kind of Pac Man. The kids like it very much. I think Criteria, uh, you can use this. Well, the nice thing of this, when you compare it to uh, years ago, then you were talking against a non-existent uh, level, because some were higher, some were lower. With this kind of things, uh, and I think Mike will come later on back with, uh, with the lecture or, uh, about uh, the chess game. But these principles are, uh, let them uh, have success experiences, start with their own uh, level, and then the nice thing is, when I do this after school and after school programs, um, they can do it alone, they can do it together, but uh, they're always on their own uh, level, at their own space, and then I walk around coaching. And they discover, uh, there's a big element of discovery learning in it involved too. This is also a Dutch invention. So, I don't know if you know it, but it's, you can do it without such a nice board. You have 16 squares, uh, you have pieces, you can uh, make the combination yourself. And then you have only three things. You put it in, uh, you move or you take. Uh, so you learn to anticipate, you learn to analyze, etc. It's all there. Very nice uh, mini game. <laughs> this is uh, for a couple of mine. He, uh, Thomas Beertz, he was in uh, Tata Challenges, he missed his third gen norm by one, one point. When he was six years old, he uh, played his first weekend tournament, I know, because I organized the weekend tournament, and he was with the late international master Rob Rattoch. And uh, it show, I just show it, uh, because um, it shows what is possible um, for young kids to, to reach already. <coughs> Play together. Two grandsons. This is also a Dutch invention, render of chess. You, uh, you take a card, and sometimes it's the, it's the wrong card, of course, and then you tell them that's, uh, that's uh, like life. Sometimes it's, it's not uh, always parallels with life. For example, also, uh, to avoid mistakes. I ask them, when you go, and that's, the, that's a bit of... Um, yeah, how to shape your uh, thing. Um, how to explain them? I asked him, for example, um, do you sometimes cross the street? Of course, when you come to school, I feel. What you do? Why don't you do it at the chessboard? That kind of comparisons and some rules of terms and some insights. Okay, that's the same with, uh, with uh, this card. Sometimes you have the wrong cards, but make the best of it. Kind of set is nice. Uh, mini games. Uh, there is this chess karate pit uh, thing. And that was it. And you can reach out to me later. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you to all my presenters and thank you for all the online presenters as well and the technical team. And that's what we have to offer for today, apart from a great reception upstairs, which is, uh, I'm sure you already related. <laughs> upstairs, yes. Yeah. People are going to the reception. Is there a place to sign up? We just walk together over there or after the, um, after the reception here? That King's Head oh. parties? Uh, after the reception, I think they, uh, everybody will gather at the King's Head pub. That's all I know, but it's optional. It's not, uh, you don't have to register. You just, just you just walk. It's a it's a fifteen minute walk. Yeah, we can walk together. Yeah. So yeah, the with the Russian speaker. Yeah, now, yeah. Our reception. yeah. yeah. Our reception. Yeah. Yeah. And it's optional who goes yeah. there yeah. after yeah. for yeah. dinner. Yeah. But you're all invited to the reception. Yeah. Where's yeah. yeah. the Russian yeah. speaker? Baruski, Tasiba. So thank you for your attention. What do you need? Bring him down. Please stop the street. You know, there is a car wash, right?